Well, the opportunity to be able to fly an airplane uh, as advanced as this one and to get to uh, see different parts of the world and to have an office that's 37,000 feet in the sky is pretty cool. Well, with corporate aviation, uh, you have the opportunity to live much closer to where you fly. Um, with airline flying in particular, you're often stuck having to commute to an airport that may be halfway across the country. And so uh, you spend a good majority of your days off having to commute away from and back home. Uh, another benefit of corporate aviation from a pilot's perspective um, is you really get to know the people that you're flying for. Um, when you're an airline pilot, um, you tend to not know the people that are in the back of the airplane. You may not, may not ever even see them, but with corporate aviation, you really get to have a personal relationship with the people that you're flying for, and it's just very rewarding. Um, one of the details that uh, is involved in corporate flying is uh, you're much more involved in the management of the airplane. So, um, you know, we're not just pilots, we're also uh, baggage handlers, we're fuelers. Uh, we have to fly the airplane to uh, base, uh, maintenance bases to get the airplane, um, you know, its maintenance taken care of. Um, so flying is actually really only a very small part of our actual job. Um, and so there's a lot of other things managing the airplane behind the scenes that uh, most people wouldn't really think about. Uh, probably the biggest challenges we face are just the needs of the owner. So we don't have a set flying schedule. We fly when the owner wants to fly. Um, and so that can make our schedules uh, difficult to, to manage just because if you're trying to plan a vacation or um, if you have something going on, you're never really sure if the owner is going to have a trip come up at that point. Um, and also trips may come up very short notice. So you think that you have tomorrow off and all of a sudden you're on a trip somewhere. So, um, you know, the, you take the good with the bad, um, but that's one of the, I would say one of the downsides to corporate flying, especially in a small department. If you're in a big corporate department where you have 10 pilots, it's probably a lot easier to manage. But in our operation, we only have two pilots and the airplane requires two pilots. So anytime the airplane flies, typically we have to go with it. Um, so that can, that can be difficult to, to work around, but you, know, you take the good with the bad. You have to be flexible. Flexibility is an incredible um, part of this job. Um, if you expect to show up at the airport, go fly, come home and uh, come back and go home, um, you're going to be greatly disappointed because things happen. And uh, as I said before, you're not just the pilot. You're also the one that helps to manage the airplane. So um, you can't just dump the airplane off like, um, you know, another, uh, let's say an airline pilot might, he leaves the airplane and leaves. We have to take the airplane to the maintenance base. We have to wait around for the mechanic to come and see the airplane. Um, you know, we have to make sure the owner's needs are met. So if we get to a destination and uh, the owner was expecting a ride, for example, a, a car to come pick them up and the car didn't come pick them up, we've got to figure out how to get the owner to where they want to go. So it's very much a hands-on type of uh, job and you've got to be very flexible and be able to react to things that uh, you weren't necessarily anticipating. So uh, I was in the Air Force for uh, a number of years, a few years, uh, and I would wanted to be an Air Force pilot since the time I'd grown up, um, since the time I was a little kid. Um, and when I got into the Air Force, I was not a pilot. And so I was really uh, disgruntled with the job I was in. I was sitting behind a desk. Um, I was actually working in a flying squadron, uh, seeing other pilots go out and fly all the time and wishing that that was me. Um, and I ended up separating from the Air Force and really didn't have a plan B, but I had the opportunity to 
uh, used the GI Bill that I earned while I was in the Air Force to actually begin my flight training. And so um, that flight training led to where I am now. And so um, despite the fact that I had always envisioned being an Air Force pilot, um, the fact that I did get out of the Air Force and was somewhat disgruntled with my, with my job in the Air Force actually led me to doing civilian flight training uh, and having the job that I have now. Uh, corporate aviation is very cyclical. Uh, it's very much dependent upon the economy uh, because a lot of corporate aviation uh, is uh, managed by, or corporate aviation in general is for um, private companies. Uh, Walmart, Target, uh, John Deere, you know, these, these massive companies that are very much affected by the economy. So um, recently, um, Aviation, corporate aviation in particular, um, was uh, very strong. I mean, it didn't really take a whole lot to go out and find a job as long as you had the right qualifications. Recently, though, we've had a slight downturn in the economy and, you know, pilots are starting to get laid off. So as these big companies try to figure out where can they shed costs, well, aviation is a big cost to a company. Um, it can be a big advantage, but it comes with a big cost as well. So with the downturn in the economy, uh, a lot of corporate av aviation is starting to shrink as well. Um, so in the future, it's hard, I, with a strong economy, corporate aviation is going to be strong. With a weak economy, um, corporate aviation is going to shrink. So again, it goes back to the flexibility that I spoke about earlier, that you really just have to, um, you really have to be flexible with, uh, with the career. <laughs> well, I like to do what anybody, you know, would want to do. I mean, you have hobbies, um, you have family time, that you know, family vacations. Um, I personally like to go out and fish. Um, I like to do astronomy, so being able to stay up late at night and look through my telescope and not be worried about having to go into work at 8 a.m. the next day is um, a pretty big benefit. Um, and then it also takes a lot of time to get out to some dark, dark areas. So if you need to spend two or three days camping somewhere, um, that's helpful to not have to have a set job. Um, but as I spoke about earlier, there's always the possibility that, you know, I, I'm not on a set schedule. So a trip could pop up at any time and I've got to be ready to pack everything up and head back home. My first flying job was uh, as a flight instructor, and that's usually the case for most pilots. Unless you go through the military, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of jobs out there um, for people that have very low flight time. Um, and so the easiest way, and um, in my opinion, one of the most beneficial ways for you to build flight time is to become a flight instructor. Um, because you can usually get that kind of a job uh, around 250 to 300 hours of flight time, uh, which is what most people have when they finish their, all of their ratings. But it also helps to reinforce the knowledge that you learned while you were going through your flight training because you really have to know the information well in order to turn around and teach it. It also teaches you um, skills like crew resource management. How do you work with another person in the airplane? Well, you have to be able to do that when you're flying a crewed airplane like this one or at the airlines or in the military. Um, but the f being a flight instructor was my first, uh, my first flying job. Uh, first of all, um, network. So the, this particular job, uh, when I applied for it, was never advertised. Um, you would not have found this on uh, Indeed or Monster.com or any other application website. It was not advertised. I knew somebody who knew somebody who knew the job was open. And so I handed a resume in. It was passed on to the person that reviewed it. They called me in for an interview and I had the job two weeks later. Um, get to know the people in the company that you want to work for. That way when a job opens, they know to come to you. Um, it's also important to have a good reputation. Aviation is a very small community. Um, you might think there's a lot of pilots in the country and there are, but uh, as a group, we are a very small group. And so uh, it's very easy for a reputation to spread, whether that's a good reputation or a bad reputation. You need to have a very strong work ethic. 
Uh, for example, in the department I work for, there's two pilots. And so if I'm not pulling my load, the other person in the, the department has to make up for that somehow. So it's not like you're in a big warehouse where there's 5,000 people and if you slack off, there's 4,000 others that can help. Um, so you need to have a strong work ethic and you need to have a uh, very good reputation because that will follow you. Um, I would say the biggest factor that helped me become successful uh, was simply persistence. Um, so I, um, you know, pushed through leaving the Air Force, not really knowing what the next step was. Um, I had that end goal in sight. I knew I wanted to be a pilot. I went to flight training. Um, you know, I was having to juggle a job with flight training and make it through that um, and just, just push through you know, some decent adversity during the course of my flight training where the flight training was more difficult than I had anticipated. Um, and then looking ahead, not really knowing, well, once I finish all of this really expensive flight training, what jobs are going to be out there. And, you know, fortunately things just fell into place and it turned out really well for me. But persistence was probably the thing that helped me uh, get, get to where I am the most. Uh, corporate aviation is a big field of aviation. When I mean big field, I mean um, this is not the only thing that corporate aviation is. Um, corporate aviation is everything from flying a Cessna 172 for a small business owner in a small town, and that's all they have, to being a part of a medium-sized operation where maybe there's two or three airplanes and you have five pilots, to flying for a Fortune 500 company where they have a fleet of airplanes and 30 pilots, and it really feels more like flying for an airline than it does flying for a corporate flight department. So um, don't necessarily think of corporate aviation as only business jets because there are corporate pilots out there that fly single engine Cessnas, that fly twin engine Cessnas, that fly jets like this, and that fly uh, Gulf streams that carry, you know, 15 to 16 people. So uh, corporate aviation, it's a big field. Um, don't try to uh, narrow it down to just one thing and be flexible.